Let's talk about the CARES Act. The monthly toll of new unemployment claims are measured in the millions. The initiatives that are necessary uh, to be the key to open, open up our economy. The single biggest economic relief package in American history. It's not caring for everybody and it's not curing for everybody. I'm Dara Baldwin. I'm the Director of National Policy for the Center for Disability Rights with the whole pandemic and the destruction of our economic system, Congress had to step in and say, we have to help out businesses. And of course, businesses to them are large businesses. Even when they discuss small business, they do not mean businesses owned by black and brown folks, women, our immigrant community. And so instead of addressing the actual issue of why we're here, we will continue to be in this space for many, many years. So where we stand right now is $350 billion that was supposed to go to just the payroll protection part of the CARES Act um, was spent in about two weeks. And we're finding that many small businesses didn't even get a response to their application, but some big ones, Shake Shack and a whole lot of others, not only got a response, but got major money. What is being done differently, if anything, this time as Congress considers another act to give more help ostensibly to small businesses? Will there be any more oversight or better design? You still have the same Congress, right? Same House and Senate, same Democrat and, and uh, Republican parties, and you're still rushing things. This is being done quickly, but no one is talking about process. No one is saying, how is this going to be done? Um, uh, who should get this money first and who should get it second? You often describe the way that lobbyists operate. You can see them when you're up there on the hill yourself. Presumably those, hill, those hallways are not teeming with lobbyists or are they right now? How is lobbying being felt? So what is happening is what we're doing now, Zooming and having conference call conversations with staffers. So what that looks like is if you weren't doing that before this and you did not have a relationship with staffers, you're not getting through. And so also that means people with a lot of money who can set up large phone calls or if you are a, a lobbyist, for large, you know, let's say tobacco, let's say oil, big oil, those staffers are gonna answer your emails first. If you were doing this again, heaven forbid, but if we were doing this again, how would you have done this differently? What I would do different, um, the Tea Party used to come here every Thursday. They would pick a state, they went in alphabetical order. And they would have those people come and the bus would stop in front of the Capitol, which is the middle. Half of the people on the bus would go to the House side and half the people would go to the Senate side. And they would have meetings all day. That's what you say. In the hallways, all I see are white folks. Let me, let, you, let, let me be very clear. White people are coming here. And they would discuss their issues and their concerns and what they wanted, to, wanted done. That was 2007 and eight. We don't come here. Progressives who want something done, don't get me wrong, marching in the street and having protests are part of it. This is a system. The system that's missing here is in the hallways. I don't see us. I don't see black folks as I should. I don't see people who are multi-marginalized as I should. I don't see people shutting offices down when they harm us and they do things that are wrong. Congress needs to hear from those people who are being disenfranchised and uh, marginalized on a daily basis. So what's the COVID version of that? in this period of physical distancing. You can still call your Congress people, their emails still work. And in this day and age in social media, call them out and continuously do it. They need to understand and know. You're not gonna so, get any work done until you do the work we need done. 